Do you know you recognize what people say, but you don't recognize the word? Because if you did, you'd do something about it, wouldn't, wouldn't you? If somebody said, fire, would you sit here? You would, okay. If somebody yells, fire to me, I'd say, where? Well, if they said, out that door, I'd go out one of these. Spirit life is much the same way. Where you place your focus, there will be your heart. Where you place your focus, there will be your heart. And that will be the spiritual heart. So if you want to right now have a real short seminar that will last a long time for you, take in your loving into the center of your being and allow it to just expand and lift you into whatever level of consciousness you want because God said, everything I have is yours. If you're not getting it, you're not claiming it, you're plain stupid. He guess he must have said that's yours also because you got it. Not all of you. Some of you got dumb. Some of you got real, real really intelligent, really intelligent. Yeah, a few of you. Let's see, one and a half. <laughs> okay, at least one and a half of you. Some, some of these things will get funny as I go along, and I'll tell you that ahead of time. So <laughs> when I come to it, I can tell you, laugh, and then you'll know you can laugh at that one. And others, I'll say, oh, that's real serious, so then you can just go ahead and be serious. What, for whatever good that does you, Oh, I've, I may tell you to worry a little bit for whatever good that does you. Has anybody ever worried about something and it changed the future? <laughs> you know, I, I tried it for 10 years, and uh, it all turned out the same anyway. <laughs> Except it turned out really lousy because I'd been worrying all the time about it. And so I decided, why worry? Why, why do anything that is less than what I really want in my heart. Why do anything less than that? I mean, if I look at you and I see you and I say I love you, then why not say I love you and feel that inside of me, that I do love you, to acknowledge to me the superiority of my loving over my critical mind and stupid emotional judgments. And yet, what do we do? criticize, fight, judge, to what event, to what end, that you'll be recognized and known for a day longer on this planet as somebody who won something, but you lost at humanity? Do we want to lose at being human? The scripture says, judge not, lest you be judged. What on earth does that mean? Is somebody going to come down and, you know, like wipe our heads off? No, it's worse than that. You get to live your own judgment. And you know how you get to live it? Inside of you, where the judgment came from, is where you have to keep living the judgment over and over and over. And the judgment you carry on somebody else is the judgment you live in every day. Don't be stupid. Switch that judgment around. Not for them. Their people are going to do what they do for you. And then you can have what you want inside of you. You think that's hard to do? Let's try it. Not by doing loving. Let's just see if you can switch it. So as soon as I say a word and you recognize it in your mind, you see it somehow, you know it, just raise your hand up like that. And then let's just sort of be aware of who's around raising hands. Just to sort of, uh, what, what do we call this? Um, what, what do you call it, John, when you do an inventory by one person? 
Yeah, when we were walking down the street in Florence, you were telling us about the statues, and I said, how'd you get that information? And you said, independent survey. Independent survey. So, you know, well, I'll tell you a story. He was doing, telling us all about this, these statues, and I said, yeah, how'd you get that information? He said, independent survey. I said, oh, yeah? Whose survey was it? He said, mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, one more little bit of loving went to John because he was smarter than me in that moment and lit up my life with just this clever thing. I never really thought of John as being a comedian. <laughs> and he wasn't a comedian that day. He was dead serious about that. And so I, first chance I had, I used the term. Somebody said something. I said, independent survey. And they said, oh, that's good. They never said who. What? There I was stuck with the punchline and nowhere to deliver it. <laughs> ah. So I just did to John. So I'm going to say one word, and when you, uh, or maybe two words or three, but as soon as you recognize it, raise your hand. Eiffel Tower. Oh, put it down. That's too fast. Red Rose. Uh, dirty Diapers. <laughs> Now, I see, now my mind goes, by content or by, <laughs> by knowledge? Now, all parents know by content. <laughs> they also know by knowledge. The rest of us know by information. We went to the house where the dirty diapers were, and we knew what that was. It was not the house of peace and harmony. <laughs> And yet, at the same time, if you said, clean the house out and get rid of the kids, they'd kill you. We will fight for the right to choose our destiny. And we'll not choose effectively the choice that God has given us to have. We won't choose effectively. Somebody says, you're going to go to the thing tonight? Well, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. You know, what do you mean you're thinking about it? You're not thinking about it. You're just seeing if something better comes up. That's all. You're comparing. It's what you should say, I'm comparing. I'm evaluating. I'm looking through the paper to see if there's a good movie, new flick, new this, new that, new that. If it's not, I'll be there. Of course, if it rains, I won't. But of course, it rained today, and here you are. So what were your choices based upon? Some sort of faith inside of you based upon empirical evidence. You know what empirical evidence is? This glass is empirical evidence. Right? This Eiffel Tower is not. Too many people lift Eiffel Towers. And you can't do a thing with those. Do yourself a favor. Get a pencil and paper one of these days in the near future, like tomorrow. You know, these stenographer notepads, they're really good to do it with because they're sort of built for the, the for wetting of the thumb and turn the page. And just start writing down the things in your life that are important to you. And if you have to stop and think, that's okay. That's permitted in here. Thinking is, is permitted. In fact, never leave your brains at the door of any place you go. Take them with you. That's your resource material. <laughs> Too many people come in and go, what are you here for? Oh. <laughs> we want you to go back out and get the rest of your brain and come back in and say, what are you here for? Say, because it's raining and I didn't want to get wet. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the answer is as long as it makes some sense as long as there's a direction to it. So what our direction are we looking for as human beings? We're looking for more loving. We're looking to find that place inside that is crippled, that's handicapped, that's hurt, that we don't know how to get rid of. And we're trying to get it fixed. And yet the fixings as the disease are all inside. Here comes a surprise for you folks. 
you can heal yourself of everything. I stop short of saying, including death, but that's not a disease, that's the process. And so you move your life where you want it to go, and you care for yourself, and you care for others. That does not mean that you've got to get out and scrub the floors or wash the windows. It doesn't mean anything like that. It means you become aware of the nature of your spirit that we can call divine and let you breathe that in and out and lift yourself into the heart of God. It's there. It's there. God can wave his hand like that and we can feel it. Why don't we feel it? Because he said it the wrong way. So how do we say it the right way? Hold your hands up like this. Tell me if you, when you feel this, wave your hand like this. So you feel the tingling. And here it comes. Some of you went across your eye and it's in your feet and you haven't noticed it yet because you've just focused on your hands. Right into the baby. Okay. Now, without me saying anything, you will feel the same thing because your spirit's tuned to the spirit of that light that was using me to reflect back off to you and using you to reflect back off to me. I knew when you got it because it came back from you to me. And I felt it. I felt it come from you. And in that, something really wonderful was happening. I was saying, thank God I know these people. I don't know your names and addresses and phone numbers. Thank God I know these people. Thank God you're here. Because we put that energy in the room. It will go out and through into other rooms and buildings and down the street. And people that are praying to God, oh God, help, I need help tonight. It will find its way into them. And we are part of that because we recognize the divine is our co-creator. And we say, then how did I create this mess? You made bad choices and you allowed it to create itself. So what do we do now? We dip the pencil and paper and we write down all the things that are good. And we track them. Turn over halfway or go at the back and start. Write down all the things that are bad. You probably get more than halfway on that one. Because why? It's your opinion that it's bad. You wanted it, you didn't get it. I don't know how many girls that I've asked this question that said, yeah, they did that. When they were growing up at some time, they sit by the phone and waited for their boyfriend to call and waited and waited and waited and went to bed without the phone call. And I listened to this and I thought, my God, that must be a great kind of love where they will sit by a phone waiting for a somebody to call that they're not sure they're going to call. What kind of love is that? That's the kind of love that produced civilizations. Because men will get up and walk out. And some men, of course, get thrown out. And, and that's okay. You know, maybe they'll learn to walk a little faster. Who knows? But we've got to learn that if we're going to be part of the divine commutation, and that means bringing down the spiritual energy here to increase the culture, to increase civilization, to increase everything around us, to give ourselves better opportunities and chances to fulfill that, we've got to start using our brains. 
We can't use our feelings all the time. Well, I felt this and I felt that and I felt this and I felt that. That's not going to do it. Those emotions need some guidance. They need some intelligence wrapped around it. That's why we have people who specialize in counseling of various kinds. So when we run short, we can go to them and say, listen, I need some informational help on this. I don't know how to do it, and it's come up my turn. That person may say, oh, that's easy. It's done like this, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You go, oh, I've been doing 1, 2, 3. No wonder it wasn't working. How did you know it was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? Because I was trained in the field. That's why I'm doing this. We're all being trained in the field of living. And look how many different ways we all live. You know, we'll, we'll criticize somebody, and other people will idolize and adore. And then we say, oh, do I love that person. Or I'd sure like to be that man and have that money and have this and have that. And then God comes in the night and says, we're going to switch bodies and you get them. And you go, no, I don't want them. As bad as what I've got, I want it. Because I don't know what they got. It looks good, it smells good, it feels good, but it may not be good. And I know what I've done and what I've created and how I can move that and how I will move that. So we now come to a place where we say, stop wishing you live a life of hallucination, you will end up terribly, terribly disappointed. See, this is empirical reality. It's real. Look. You hear that? You can even hear it. It's real. Try that with your fantasy and see what you get. Try it with your hopes and your wishes. Get those hopes and wishes written down on a piece of paper and start writing the directions of how you get there and go to the end or result of this hope and start writing backwards to you where you are now. So either way you go, you can go get it or you can go from there and come on back to you and you get it that way too. That works this way. Your past is pushing on you and your future is pulling on you. Do you know what that looks like? You might as well see it. It looks funny. Okay, let's just say there's a, uh, over here is a big rubber band. And on the other side of this table here, here. Um, without my glasses, I thought the table was further away. But, you know. <laughs> and it's put on me. It's put around me and it's nailed into the floor there. And right back over here, there's another rubber band. And it's tied around me. And there I am standing right in the middle of my life, past, present, and future. And so I take off. Here I go towards my future. And that rubber band's on me, and it's pulling me inside. <laughs> well, what, what's that? Oh, that's the rubber band from the past that's hanging on to me that won't let me go into my future. And then I get back here so far, the future band pulls and says, come on into your future. <laughs> and since I can't do this and I feel like a fool and it's not working, I go, I think I'll just stay here present. Well, at least I don't feel any pressures. I don't feel anything pushing on me or pulling on me. Of course, I'm not getting anywhere but I'm not creating any karma. <laughs> Is that fun? Well, what do you think you're living out now? Why do you think you do these crazy things? What, what is this impulse that moves on and you go, oh my God, I wonder why I did that? Because this karmic feel, this action, and it's going to take you through all of the things that you don't want until you start wanting them. Oh, well, it's pulling me backwards. That's what I wanted, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, knew I lied. Okay, well, you can't fool it. All you can do is live it to the 
best authentic ability inside of you. That's how you can do. You know, there's a story told of a rabbi, and he's in a yeshiva, and he comes in, he sits in the back of the room, and in comes the rabbi and the, that's going to talk and gives a class. He starts out, and he opens up the Torah, and he says, and God spoke, and the guy in the back of the room jumped up and yelled and started running around the room like he's flying. My God, everybody's going, you know, what's he doing? This is a rabbinical school, the divine, and then, you, know, you, don't, you don't do that. You know, we got the master teacher here to... They finally got the guy calmed down after about 30 minutes. They said, what happened? He said, didn't you hear what the rabbi said? And God spoke. Can you imagine if God spoke what it might do to you? You wouldn't even be listening. You might say, who's mumbling? Let me speak a little louder. Could you say that again? Does that really mean that, or does that mean something else? The essence is God spoke. God speaks to us. God speaks to us. There is no place you can go or be or anything else that there is not God already present. A lot of the mystics from Persia and India and a lot of Indian mystics from the United States found the divine, and they called him many, many, many different names. But you know who it was? It was always the same divine God of all. And when we start to find out that that God created us and could not let go of us, because he created us, he couldn't let go. Can you get that? He can't let go. He's got karma called human beings. <laughs> That's right. He has to claim us all back again. He sent Jesus for a whole bunch of them. But now there's a new crew picking on them. Is Jesus in there? Sure he's in there. He's part of the creation. Are you in there? You bet you're in there. How do we know this? Sit down and start writing those things on the piece of paper. You're going to give yourself a shocking surprise. You're going to look at that and say, I can't believe a word of it. Well, shut up from now on because you're the one that's talking and writing it. And don't put it down if you don't want it put out. But what if it is so? What if it is so? What if the divine is speaking through here? using my personality to distribute it. I, you know that's... Not, I mean, I have to apologize because he could have got a lot better person. But anyway, it goes on. In the Bible, there's a statement that says, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by force, but no longer because loving came upon the scene. To a man named Jesus Christ, a lot of people say, don't say that name because I'm Jewish. Well, so was he. <laughs> Jesus, you mean that guy, the Lord, the God of everything, was Jewish? Hmm, I guess I am one of the chosen people. He also chose all the Israelis, too, and all the Gentiles, and all the people who couldn't even talk. And he's choosing us every day. Are we smart enough to choose back? Are we? Or do we like to think we are, like we can intellectualize to it? You get the answer. But can you take it home with you? Can you take and lift yourself up into it? Can you grab a hold of the Lord's hand or a little finger or, or maybe he's got a tuxedo on or, or, or maybe a, a great big flowing ballerina costume? Can you grab a hold of it and hang on to it and swing through the realms of light until you get into the soul where you belong? You don't belong here. I know it's New York. You think it's special. <laughs> it is special because it's New York, isn't it? But so is San Francisco special because it's San Francisco. And you're you because you're also special. Is there anything, JR, in your theology that is not special? I haven't found it yet. I look around and go, oh, they're not up to much. 
And I look at them and they do this thing and I go, geez, that was really good. I thank God that I have the ability to recognize the goodness that people do. I had my own right to recognize the badness that people do because I grew up with people who could tell it to me. You know what we call it? Judgments. You know what they call it back then? Directing. Learning difference between right and wrong. You know what they call it now? Abuse. You know what they call it back then? Discipline. Change the word, it hurts just the same. So there's no need to change the words. So what are we going to change in here? We can change our behavior. And once we change the behavior, we don't have to look back in shame or anguish or pity nor anything else because we will not have done anything that will be abrasive to the sight of God. He will know we did the best we could and it was terrible. And he'll say, you can have another chance. And we don't want another chance. We're petitioning him. No more chances, okay? Just take us up. <laughs> we can go by the circus on the way. We can visit the Grand Canyon, you know, wrap back around. Because why? Because everything here seems to go screwy. If it's not somebody robbing you, it's somebody stealing you. If it isn't somebody loving you, it's somebody taking your lover from you. There not there always a game of foot? Do you know one person that doesn't have a game of foot, an agenda of some kind working? You sit down and start to talk to them very carefully. You know what their agenda might be? That I want to just love you. Don't hide that agenda. But the hidden agendas that people have. I'll say something in here, and I've heard John do it. And some people just uproar laughter. It's because they're all doing that. On the other side, deafening silence. Because they're also doing that the wrong way. So this group don't like him, and this group just loves him. Me, you all love me because I do both sides. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing you can do that I haven't done. You think I'm going to judge me because of you? Ah, come on, that's, that's nuts. I'm not going to judge me because of you. What if you judge me? You don't know me well enough to judge me. You just know well to watch my behavior. I'm not my behavior. Are you your behavior? After you do a behavior, isn't there something else also in there that says I can observe the behavior? Well, who is that? that observes your behavior that you judge in other people? Who is that that's able to know it, to bring it to shape, to forward it? Why do you give up on the midst of something great and sabotage your life and eat and get all fat and bloated out and then have to come back and do it all and get it straight again and then blow it all out again and say, well, who cares anyway? Well, listen carefully. You care anyway. And if you don't care up to right now, by God, start caring now, because that's you. I hope you felt that as a reprimand. But I bet you felt it as love coming through, too. Because there's a lot more love in what I say than what I, than what I do. I can't do all the loving that comes through. I know you can't either. I know a lot of you want to hug me. So one day I hug you, and you can't stand it. You just start trembling, breaking apart inside, and you start crying. Why? Because the divine energy that moves to you on that hug, it's going to love you. Do you know the Bible says God is no respecter of persons? Well, who do you think the Holy Spirit is if not part of God? Who do you think we are if we're not part of God? And when we start to hug each other, and hug each other. I did a baby blessing tonight on a beautiful little girl, just terrific. She knew more of what was going on in that room than anybody there but me. And I wondered about me a few times. 
and she showed the path. And she was crying. She was exercising. I don't know, maybe it was opera and I didn't recognize it. But I knew one thing. The love in that room that was pouring out on that kid, you could build buildings with it. That was empirical evidence. Have you ever had somebody that you love or that loves you and you're attracted to the same things and you feel it and you know it? It's true because you know it to be true. Because it's in your trueness. And it's in that heart of loving and caring. And you know it. And you also know when people are out of line with you. Because that trueness also knows falseness. And have you ever loved someone and you really loved them and you married them and it said, till death do you part, and five years later, death appeared as divorce? But did it have to? No. I'll tell you a secret. Any divorce can be saved. All you got to do is two simple things. The man looks at the woman, and all the things that bother him, he keeps out of the relationship. The woman looks at the man, and all the things he does that just drives her crazy, she keeps out of the relationship. And the things that those two don't like about each other, they do not bring into the relationship. And the things that they do like about each other is what the relationship is about. Think about that for just a few seconds. You've got a choice to either pick on that person, judge them, over-evaluate them, or you've got a chance to say, pass, and produce the loving form. Where they say, you know that thing you used to do that bugged me? Do it if you feel like it. <laughs> and then, wouldn't that be mean to go, I get to do it, I get to do it, I get to do it. Why? I forgot what it was. I haven't done it for so many years. Peace. Well, I guess we can make problems. But I know that if we watch how we behave towards things that are irritating to us, things get irritating to me. Somebody honk a horn right behind me, you know, and I jump about three feet and never move because I'm a little too heavy to jump too high. But I know that if I choose carefully how I get out of a taxi on the street, I have less chance of having a car hit me than if I get out the other side. There's a lot of taxis in the world. What do you get out of that you don't like that you step into something that hits you that you don't like even more? You weren't watching. You got two eyes. Turn one for that direction and the other one for that direction. Take a look at it. You look behind it just out of pure paranoia. <laughs> you know, you're not paranoid if somebody is out to get you. <laughs> and there are people in this world that are out to get other people. I've had them try to get me. I've got, I've got a history of people trying to track me down. When they get to me, they say, oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> I go, gee, that sure hurts. You hurt my feelings. What you said didn't hurt it, that you were disappointed. I thought I could at least irritate you a little bit, something. You know, something. They go, nope, 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 nope. And I've got them engaged in conversation. Now we start talking. While they were saying, no, 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 we were in conversation. And I just go, no, 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 right with them. And they're in conversation. Then they start to explain their no, and I start to explain my no. By the time we both get to explaining our no's, we're to yes. Because we didn't know what that no was until they told us. You know how we get to yes real fast? We talk about the knownness in our life and how these things have been there and how we've allowed them to be there and how we put them there or how our mother did or our father did 
or a dead uncle or a dead aunt or the friend that didn't call or didn't marry or didn't let me come to their baby's uh, birth or, or blessing or my baptism or something out there. Oh, forget that nonsense. Life is full of joy and wonderful flowers and beautiful music and beautiful beings all around you. Start to look there. Well, what about these things where they hurt your feelings? What are you doing, worshiping feelings today? Feelings disappear real fast. I can switch gears and have you laughing, and switch gears and have you upset, switch gears and you ignore the whole thing. And those are just your emotions bouncing around. The only thing I ever found them good for was these bouncing ball commercials on in the, the old theaters when they would play a song and the ball would bounce on the word and you were supposed to keep time with the word. That's how they caught, taught us to count when I was young. Well, I had other messages also besides the go to the, to the theater. But it's taking advantage, not pushing somebody else out of the way. It's not that. It's not when it's raining and the taxi stop and there's two of you going for it that you bang them in the nose and get the taxi because you're taking advantage of the situation. It's not that. It's stopping the person saying, where are you going? They say, uptown, I'm going uptown too. Where? 69, 69, where? 6th Street. Do they go the same way? Avenue of the Americas. You say, let's drive together and share the taxi. How many of you ever shared a taxi with somebody? See, you guys already know this. <laughs> you know, but do you persist in the knowing, or do you know and then drop out? That's the question. Do you know these spiritual things? Then you drop out. Or do you know them and you pursue them until you start to lift by the mere impetus of thinking of the Spirit of God and loving? There's little babies in this room. There's little kids in this room. There's young children in this room. And I saw some over here on their knees racing along the corridor on the knees, and I thought, how terrific. God, I bet that hurts. <laughs> uh, uh, just, just how terrific. How wonderful it is. Not as any kind of make-believe, no platitudes, nothing like that. As a real statement, as me calling out your name, as a real who you are, I'm identifying you. I am pointing you and identifying you. And out of you in that pointing, I'm identifying the loving that is going to lift us all, not just you, the whole group, not just the whole group, the whole county, the, everything. Can we do that? Do you want to? Do you want to do it? Yeah, we can do it. Why? Well, I don't know what religion you are, but Jesus is a pretty good reference point. And he said, this that I do, you too shall do an even greater because I'm going to the Father. And if he said that, either he lied and forget the whole thing and drop the religions out, or get on your horse and take off. It's available. What if you don't care to run? You might fall off. Walk your horse. Jeez, don't be stupid about the methods. There are too many of them. What if I miss giving you one? Oh, give it to yourself. I don't have to say it. You just have to hear the spirit of truth say it through you, through somebody else on a billboard, TV, movies. When you come into a fuller consciousness of, aha, the Archimedes syndrome, Eureka, then he runs down the street naked. Of course, only in Greece could you get away with something like that. Well, or New York City. <laughs> well, I know you can't in Hollywood because uh, years ago when David Niven was uh, emceeing uh, the Oscar, a guy broke and ran from behind him just as naked as a jaybird, except the jaybird had feathers on. We didn't know quite what that guy had on, but he certainly made a point about he wasn't really endowed enough to walk through public like that. I understood that. <laughs> Are we endowed enough spiritually? 
to walk through our life. We are. Are we all endowed the same way? No. Why? It would get boring. It would get terribly boring. And so we all got little peculiarities that people judge as bad that are really humorous occasions and waking us up to new things that are going on. And we should be looking for those ha 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 on people instead of, oh, look how terrible that was. And that's, that's even worse. Oh, my God. And who are we to know all that? We stand at the door of God's kingdom and become beggars trying to get in when we have the master key. And what is that? It's divine love. Divine love is not beyond us. It is authentically caring from your heart into another person or an animal or a tree or whatever. It's an authentic caring. And once we reach that, We have to step back from the doors into the kingdom of heaven because they don't push out. They actually come back in. So we've got to stop pushing everything. Our blood pressure drops. Our diseases go away. Back comes the door. They step in, and we're in. Then what does the door do? Close behind us? No. It stays open as a way shore to the next one behind you. We're role models for the next one behind us. We're leaders for the next one behind us. We're following the one in front of us and leading the one behind us and loving all of them along the way. And if you're not doing that, you really don't belong in any more of these seminars with me. If you don't, if you bumble sometimes and you, and you don't do it, cool. We're not perfect here. We're just going for good and excellent. If you go for perfection, that means it can't move ever, 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 ever again. That's a statue. That's not life. We're to have life and to have more of it. And that means we've got to move around to have more of the life that we're to have more of. We've got to get walking to those places where those opportunities of living are there for us. We've got to take advantage of the movement of our body before it dies on us. Those are our choices. Those are our responsibilities. And remember, we're way showing for others who are coming along. And so what kind of a way shower do you want to be? One who cares or one who is just saying, get out of the way, kid, you bother me. Peru Spichet.